All right, uh, let's move on. The Jets 27, the Packers 10, a stunning outcome in Lambeau Field. The Jets 17 point win over the Packers matches the largest win by any team at Lambeau Field over the Packers when Aaron Rodgers played the entire game. The Packers have lost consecutive games in the regular season for the first time in five years. The last time they lost consecutive games, they finished six, nine, and one and missed the postseason. I believe Mike McCarthy got fired. Uh, or at least got fired the middle. No, 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 I guess it was the middle of the next year where he uh, get canned. Brees Three. Hall. Brees had a Brees had a monster game last two weeks. Or excuse me, last first three weeks they weren't really feeding him in New York. Last three weeks, twenty carries per game or twenty touches per game. Excuse me, one hundred and thirty two scrimmage yards and three touchdowns. He's the first Jets rookie with a rushing touchdown in three straight games since nineteen eighty four. And man, he looked awesome. And Is that Freeman McNeil. Uh, Do you have in front of you? I don't. Okay. Let's go with Freeman McNeil. I feel like that's an awesome one. Go ahead. Keep going. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, did you guys see Aaron Rodgers' comments post-game, which were very sort of metaphysical? Uh, yeah. No. He said, we've got to watch our language and the kind of energy that we're manifesting. But I'm going to be steady with the guys, talking about the players, and I expect our leadership to do the same. And the implication, um, at least reading the athletic post-game by Matt Schneidman is that at points during the week, Matt LaFleur wasn't exactly uh, positive a, a, about the, the the mindset coming in this game, in, in part because Robert Sala is his best friend, in part because his brother's on the coaching staff for the Jets, and that perhaps maybe had something uh, to do with it. LaFleur actually said during the week, ultimately you hate beating up on your buddy in this league, but it is what it is, and I think that perhaps for reading the tea leaves, Aaron Rodgers took issue with that. Um, well, and also worth noting that Rogers last week after the game was asked about um, looking ahead, like they yep. lost the Giants. He was asked about looking ahead. I was like, I don't want to. He's like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to answer that because I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to think about that. I'm going to tell those guys that sort of body language, that sort of mental approach is not uh, acceptable. And and, and I get that as a veteran leader. But well, that's because some of his teammates had said, "Oh, we'll be fine. We'll beat the Jets next week." Yeah, but this is also the guy that ran Mike McCarthy out of town. And has, you know, been described as prickly by some of his former teammates. So, I don't know. I, I get it. I don't know if any of that mattered once the game started. I think the takeaway for me is that the Jets are better than we thought they were. And uh, the Packers are worse than we thought they were. Um, Aaron Rodgers didn't look great. He got beat up a lot. And that seems to be a recurring theme over the course of uh, the first, you know, six weeks or so of the season. It's the third time this season the Packers have not scored 15 points That's in a, a game. That is a huge problem. And it's not even that they're worse than we thought they were. So their offense is like a thousand times worse than we thought they were going to be. And I think a lot of people assume they were going to take a step back. You lose Devontae Adams when he's getting 170 targets. Where are those 170 targets going when Aaron Rodgers doesn't trust any of his receivers? Uh, what are you supposed to do? And it feels like Robert Sala really... He said his thought process seemed to be, you know what? Aaron Rodgers doesn't like throwing these guys. They're going to try and run the ball a little bit. No, that didn't work. So now Aaron Rodgers has to throw 41 passes when he hates throwing to everyone on the team. And that, of course, is not going to work. And the Packers were a special teams disaster. I mean, this was the type of team they had. What? They had a field goal blocked, a punt blocked. A punt blocked for a touchdown. Yeah. A punt block for a touchdown. I believe they were the first team since the Packers in the playoffs against the 49ers to have a field goal blocked and a punt block for a touchdown. So they did also block a punt, but they didn't score a touchdown off of it. Uh, someone in the comments asked, What was Jair's uh, comments uh, coming into this week? And he said last week that he wasn't worried about the defense after the loss to the Giants, but would be if the Packers lost the following week, the following week being today on Sunday. So that sort of led to all the other conversations we had about the Aaron Rodgers remarks and then LaFleur and all that. And, and that's try Aaron and flying. Uh, we're good as long as we beat the Jets. You know, like we should beat the Jets. Yeah. And, they and did, they then, of not. course, they did not. And they got smoked. And so, Prince, <laughs> you, you, Prince, you always bring up the, uh, the, the concern scale. Uh, what, what's our concern rate with the Packers on a scale of one to ten? Nine and a half. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that ain't even over exaggerating. And Brinson likes to exaggerate. I mean, it's, it's probably more like a six and a half or seven, if I'm being like realistic, just because you see. No, it, it, it's not. It's nine and a half. This okay. team is playing so poorly that not even Brinson will put them in the Hall of Fame. That's how bad they're playing. <laughs> this is the fourth time in Aaron Rodgers' career. He started three and three in 2008. He missed the playoffs. In 2010, he won the Super Bowl. 2012, lost the divisional round. And obviously, we don't know what is going to happen with them here. I mean, the the one thing you could say too, though, is like 
you know, it's possible that the Jets and Giants are much better than we think they are. It's also possible the Packers should have taken their bye after coming back from London. We, we discussed that coming to the week. They was like, that's a dangerous spot for Green Bay. No bye. You're bringing the Jets in. This is a coaching staff, as you mentioned, that has an intimate knowledge of what Green Bay likes to do on offense. Um, and, and really, like their philosophy, Rodgers doesn't have, you know, the, the offensive line is not great this year. The running game was non-existent for him against the Jets. Quentin Williams was an absolute monster in this game, by the way. he I believe he blocked the field goal, didn't he? Blocked he the field goal. Blocked the field goal it was just all over Rodgers in the backfield. Um, you know, it, it's if he's – like, that's such an intriguing – sort of possible breakout if he's if he's if he's morphing into you know a dominant player uh, and, and you know so far this season he, he definitely has been it's like if he's if he's that good and sauce gardner is gonna be this good you know this defense has a lot more juice especially with robert Sala calling the plays by the way sauce gardner after the game i'm sure you saw this uh grabbed a cheese head and was walking around the uh was leaving lambo field with a cheese head on his head al lazard ran up to and knocked it off his head um in an act of defiance this is like the uh, T.O. at the Dallas Star situation. By the way, Victor Garcia makes a, a good point. Another dunk button situation for Brinson. The Giants didn't take their bye after the London game, and they beat the crap out of the Baltimore Ravens today. I, they wouldn't say they beat the crap out of them. I added that as for a little flourish at the end there. I, I want to ask you guys about this. Fourth and 14th, fourth quarter, 9-12 to go on the clock. Uh, the Jets are whooping the Packers' ass 24-10. to 10. Uh, Green Bay goes from, from their own 30-yard line. Or maybe from the other 30. Where did they go for it from? I have plus 30 down here. I'm going to assume that it was the uh, Jets 30-yard line. Um, is, is that something you want to do on 4th and 14? Down 14 points with nine minutes to go? That feels oh, like it's the Jets 37, yeah. Yeah, okay. So they, that was right. The plus 30. It, it the- felt, well, it felt like... I don't know, it kind of felt like a now or never situation, but yeah, that's even with hard. nine minutes to go. The the fun, I mean, the ball fell incomplete, so it didn't matter. But insult to injury, there was also offensive holding, which felt about right given how this game unfolded. Uh, and they were going for it on fourth and fourteen, even though they only had one play in the entire game that went longer than fourteen yards. Yeah, that's that's. that's I mean, the, the lack of Adams has just killed the explosiveness in this. Team. As Brenton used to say, and he hasn't said in quite a while, uh, desperation is a what is it? Stinky, stinky cologne. Stinky cologne. <laughs> you know the. We always talk about how Aaron Rodgers kind of checks out. If uh, Billy, he, write that one down. Desperation is a stinky cologne from Super. If he Trump. gets frustrated, or if he starts to get frustrated, and I don't know that we necessarily saw that. But do you think? What if this team loses a couple more games against teams they probably should be beating? Uh, you know, like they have the Commanders. You know, what if they got upset by the Commanders or the Lions? They play in the next. Oh, they, they're at Commanders, at Bills, at Lions. We game road trip coming up. Let me ask you this, just a completely hypothetical simulation theory, alternate universe, galaxy brain stuff. Would both these teams be better? <clears throat> Let's assume they have just two weeks to prepare. They'll know the, the playbook. But what happens if you trade Tom Brady to the Packers and Aaron Rodgers to the to the Buccaneers? Are those teams better? Fresh start, veteran quarterbacks that are almost certainly never going to play again <laughs> after, they, after the, their last game in week 18 or whatever it is? Well, um, that's a good question. I think that Aaron Rodgers probably benefits the most because the offensive line is struggling with injuries in Green Bay. But they I both think Brady could make the most out of with, with like a crappy group of wide That's receivers. That's true. But they both those quarterbacks, to breach his point, seem to have checked out to some who, degree. Who says if, if if the if the deal gets in place and both guys have a no trade clause, who exercises their no trade clause first? I think it's probably Brady. I don't well, think Brady wants to be anywhere near Green Bay. He picked to live in Florida for a yeah, reason. Yeah, the cold weather. I think Aaron Rodgers is, is peacing out. Aaron, Ray, Aaron Rodgers on the first flight out of Green Bay. If Ro- Rodgers and the Packers are also two and a half games back of the Vikings in the division. Tom Brady's still in first in their division, and, and it's not like anybody looks. Also, the big the big loser right now uh, in, in the uh, NFC North, Mike Zimmer. He gets fired the, the exact moment that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and his offense goes in the tank, and you see uh, – Kirby Cousins wearing bling today after their victory. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, more Sunday recap. Next. Giants 24, Ravens 20. Another. Hey, quickly, one more thing. We need to, we, we do this all the time. Are the Jets the second best team in that division? Hmm. The AFC East is good. I think they're the second best team in that division. I still like the Dolphins, and I know the Jets beat them 40 to 17, but that game was a lot closer. Tua didn't play. You had Teddy Bridge. They were on their third quarterback, and the the Dolphins still had that close okay. late in the second half. 
I mean, it, to it, Mac it Jones, could, but okay. you could certainly make the argument that it is the Jets. 